Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at the keyboard that I've already done stock sound tests on. Today, I wanted to go ahead and start digging into it. Um, now, I'll uh, link to my original video down below. Um, I do think this is a great keyboard. I just think that it's just a bit overpriced for what it delivers, though it's, though it's nice. Um, but it is extremely, extremely um, substantial. It has a nice silicon pad. I wasn't able to find the size of the battery, oddly enough, which I was under the impression that that had to be listed. But um, I want to get in there, see the size of the battery, see how well it was built. I don't really think there's much else we can do as far as making it sound better. Um, mine is changing out the switches and maybe putting on some different caps um, and I think I have just the caps for that but and uh, just so you guys recall this is this is the um, the dust cover which is magnetic and holds in place with those magnets but it also serves as a it's hard to place but it does work once you get it right start uh, disassembling this kit. All right, so we got all the keycaps off. I've actually, uh, uh, I purchased these all in different colors. I have these by full sets and I actually like them. This camera, the auto zoom is not very good. Um, I'm not impressed with the camera so far. Anyway, uh, I think these are some pretty cool keycaps. These actually have some extra because they have some sub, sub legends on them for the specific bindings this keyboard has. So um, the switches, it looks like. Get to use this one on film. Uh, this one's great. It has a little problem sometimes with the top and bottom rows because it's hard to just get it in there. Oh, I'm using one. I'm for it, But once you get it in, ah, uh, apologize. I hit the camera stand with my head. You could just pull straight up and they come out. Uh, so these are actually what looks like three pin kale switches. Tactile. Not bad. Super light. But we get our first peek at the PCB and oh well I mean I do remember this from uh, doing the original video, but uh, yeah, this is ridiculous camera. Come on, don't you have auto? I've already been able to see this before when I did the original video, but the LEDs are raised about one, maybe one and a half millimeters off of the surface. So uh, these are only going to work with uh, switches that have um, the SMD window, a little window that you know clear through. Uh, otherwise, um, it could cause damage. I'm trying to use other ones and, you know, wondering why they don't fit. All right, so now that we've discussed that, I'll probably it's here to show you a lot better once we get in there, but let's go ahead and take all these switches out, okay? All right, here's our first look of the, the uh, bare plate. Uh, I can't really tell. I wanna say it's aluminum, but I can't tell how much of the weight that composes. Um, they have uh, our lights right here. They just have their little diffusers to go through, so we're gonna have to pay attention for that and for the magnets. And it does not look like it's a daughter board. It looks like it's right on the uh, plate. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws, eight screws holding this puppy down. Let's go ahead and pull them out and see what we got from there. All 
Right, we got those screws out. Let's see, it should pull out. Get all the screws. Sometimes I, I get blind and I just miss a screw. Nope, looks like I got them. It's just wedged in there pretty good. Yeah. Hope there's no screw from underneath. Let's see. You've taken out the stabilizer for work. Well, that was a lot of fun. That was really wedged in there. Uh, let's go ahead and disconnect the JST cable. So one thing I did notice, um, this plate has yeah, put screwed in. Ah, let's see if it'll zoom in. And you see, there's little like uh, like the Band-Aid mod, little pads underneath the uh, stabilizers. With, and it looks like they actually have a little bit of dielectric grease already applied on them. They could actually be even silicon pads. I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, I'll have to get in there. And unfortunately, it looks like the battery is <laughs> it's attached to the bottom silicone. So um, there's the magnet for this that will fall out pretty easy. Oh, I dropped the diffuser. Uh, this is the diffuser for the LED lights. But alright, so now I've never seen a construction like this in my life. So it looks like we are attached. Alright, so if we start. Alright, oh. The battery was just sitting in there with double sided tape. <laughs> Alright. Magnet's actually part of the silicone. So that falls apart. And we've got these uh, dip switches that we're going to have to look out for when we're putting this puppy back in to make sure that we're probably all to one side. At least now we know it's a 2,900 milliamp hour battery. So I'm not going to take the rest of it off because the silicone is obviously not a replaceable part. All right, so um, now let's go ahead and take off the plate. These screws over here to see them. One, two, three, four. Put four screws. For the moment. All right, now there we go. Ha! No way. It's actually a part of. All right, that's interesting. I, I've got to say, I've not seen that design before, but it's pretty, um, I'd say that's pretty ingenious. Uh, <laughs> they actually, because at first I was like, what is that? I mean, I you could tell it has a little bit of grease. I don't know, I mean, it's got the imprint of the feet on it, so I don't know if it, like, they actually put some on there beforehand, or it, uh, it um, just came that way. But yeah, I'm 
even for the space bar. That's actually, that's not a bad design. Um, it feels like it's silicone. Silicone rib. Sil I don't know why I have trouble saying that word. Silicone. Silicone rubber. So, um, that's very interesting. And the plate, it's definitely aluminum. It's very, very lightweight. So, um, now the PCB. All right, this, uh, I don't know, it just strikes me as a, this strikes me as a cheaper PCB. Like I said, you can see if I do the profile here, how the LEDs are sticking up above. I guess it would help to actually have a, right there, you should be able to see they're sticking up probably about a half a millimeter eye over estimated. But they are sticking above the um, the piece. It does have a, like a, a short out. So DK seven one zero B RGB. Here we can see the, the antenna for wireless, and there's the model, the DK seven one zero B underscore RGB. But it's got their uh, hex gears watermark on it and it does say USB 2 but it has a USB C port so I I mean I see a couple of resistors there but <sighs> there's issues with some boards I don't know if this one has it I'm not gonna find out just to kill it uh, but they have the USB C port but if you use a USB C to USB C um, cable it actually why won't you focus already yeah I don't I'm, this is a DSLR right now and I'm not really liking it um, but yeah this is um, that's kale hot swap sockets and I like a cream color but the LEDs sticking up because like I said they're not through hole it's just uh, I don't know. I am, um, like I said, I like this design. This, I don't like at all. I mean, don't get me wrong, it sounds pretty good, but the fact that the battery and everything, and also, you've got the magnet here, and and the magnet's not that great. In my other video, I showed how easily um, it pops out with just a nice little bump. Um, and then, I mean, if for some reason I wanted to, so say if like for some reason I wanted to change or take out uh, the silicone because I like the clear look, you know, I mean, why not? But having the battery stuck on there like that with 2AT, that was kind of, I don't know, kind of chintzy in my opinion. Um, looking for the connector, it's on this side, so yeah, we'll do it that way. Uh, that just lays in there so obviously there's not really much we can do for this um, seeing that it's actually grooved out for everything I don't even think I can apply the Tempest tape mod on here because it would probably interfere since it looks like it's literally snug fit so hmm That's probably why it was so hard to pull out, was because of that. There's the LEDs and the little diffuser, yeah. And even with those switches, even without the Tempest tape mod, I, I'm looking at issues perhaps. <laughs> But um, since I really can't do any much to it, the only thing I can really do is add some PE foam mod, switch out, take out the switches, take out the caps. I mean, because there's not. I mean, yeah, I could probably 
glue the magnet onto the bottom of the case, but that would be a bad look. Um, then, obviously I'm gonna have to stick the battery to the bottom of the case and then apply silicone above it, but really am I gonna gain anything because this is a pretty thick mat? No. Um, and not having, since it's literally <laughs> press fit for the back of the PCB, I don't even have the, uh, the availability really to, uh, to put Tempest tape on because even the tiniest amount is going to interfere with those switches grabbing on to these bottom switches and um, so yeah so really the only thing I could do is a sheet of PD foam on this is literally already has pocket for the entire stabilizer huh I wonder 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 who who designed this keyboard <laughs> All right, I'll screw this thing back together. I think it's gonna be easier to trim that off. All right, trim this up real quick. Go ahead and I guess put it back together. I'm gonna orientate these switches to where they're all the way over to my right. I'm gonna have these all the way over to the right. So hopefully they fall into place. That I'll check after I plug this in because wow, it actually looks like they put a little bit of glue around the JST connector. Now, granted, you know I like the design and I like especially with the silicone, but they really are basically saying this isn't for modding. You know, don't don't open her up. Um, which I don't know. I mean. I understand wanting to build something a certain way, but at what point, you know, is it like, okay, well, this is a hobby, and I know most enthusiasts are going to take their keyboard apart, but this one, you don't need to mod, and really, it even cause issues if you mod it. So, I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I've seen things along the build that are kind of like mods, so, but, I don't know. So, I'm, I'm kind of, um... I'm kind of divided, but definitely having glue on the JST connector uh, and the way that this is made, it basically is saying, hey, don't mess with me. So I guess I have it on the on position. <laughs> now let me see. Oh, I've got to make sure I get... So the switches are working, we've confirmed that. Let me go ahead and close her back up. And then let's pick some switches to go. The stabilizer's back in. Yeah, these are, these are nicely lubricated. Oh. Yeah, they have two different types of grease, it looks like even. So, not really much we can do even there, so we're just going to put them in as is. I mean, they don't even really... Well, I guess they could use a tape. Of course, now once I put it back together. So, that might have taken up a bit longer than I expected, but it's well worth the effort. As you can see, these stabilizers are not moving at all before. There was just, I mean, it wasn't a rattle, but they were a tiny bit loose. I could move them back and forth. Now they're in there. Um, they're in like Flynn and they're not going anywhere. 
got some extra tape here. Put this up. Now, what switches shall we do? Since I'm gonna go ahead and try, obviously I need to stick with some windowed switches. I decided to go with a Gatoron Silver. It's a really lightweight box dump saw. I haven't used one in a, in a minute. Um, I'm quite fond of Akko's CS Silver switches. But um, these Gatorons do have the SMDs, and I have enough of them. So let's go ahead and load her up. All right, so there she is, with the uh, all lit up and ready to go. I, uh, I was like, I, I could use the white caps, the white set of gear caps, but I wanted to just change it up a little bit and use something a little bit more traditional, a little bit more classy. So I've got a PBT set here of uh, white or black on white. Um, and let's see what it looks and sounds like. I mean, I figured why not just match the nice clean look and see, see what we got. So we've got these very, I mean, these Gatoron Silvers are quite nice. Uh, so, well, we can chuck this in the bye bye pile. Now, well, let's just confirm. Oh, we have different size. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure we were going to have the right shift, but we've got. Even split space bars. That's an interesting set. I one of those no name brand. Um, got it off AliExpress. It's PBT. Um, wow, it's even got the Alice keys. Not bad. These were uh, nineteen dollars, I believe. I don't know. Sorry about that. Wipe my face. So we got three layers of caps. So we definitely have. It's this one or this one. I can't tell they both look the same. Yeah, it looks like the right one. I'm sure where's the up arrow. Yep, alright. So let's go ahead and All right, so here we're almost fully loaded. I just wanted to take a look. I, I'll, I'll try to see if I can, I, I should be able to find and add a link in the description. Uh, these were on sale during one of AliExpress's uh, many sales, but um, they're double shot PBTs and they're actually pretty nice. Now, one thing that I have been doing for practically all of my space bars, um, and I love it, it really adds a nice thought to it. And it was a uh, keyboard. Uh, I did a short, a YouTube short on it. So basically, I just take and cut little strips of. This is a Noiko. This is a generic brand. There's another brand that's pricier. I, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's a butyl rubber. It's uh, used for uh, dampening vehicles. So actually, I could cut this one. Uh, yeah, it's wider on this end. Let me see. But you can basically. I mean, he cut them. Well, there was he was using for different sort of for a different keycap set. So. But I usually just cut something wide enough, and press it down, and because it, I mean, I don't take the adhesive and actually stick it to it because that's actually the adhesive backing. Um, but I've never found a reason to do it because the rubber itself, this it's covered by like this silver and aluminum foil, um, does the trick. Here, seems about right. Um, not that deep. Just a bit of it off. We don't want it interfering with the stem and causing any binding issues. So, better to be a little short than covering it. All right. 
and got them pressed out. So this is a great little trick. I've, I've seen more than one layer. I don't think it's necessary, especially, I mean, we're doing dealing with the cherry profile here. So go ahead and stick this on, make sure. All right. I actually like how it sounds, and now that we have the white on white, I I, I gotta say I, I do like this better than the um, stock, the way it came. Uh, these are cool caps, but there needs to be something tying it together, and I'm not complaining. What I'm getting from this keyboard is is good build quality, but some questionable design decisions. If I had to summarize this board, I'd say it's a board for someone who wants a modded 65% wireless keyboard, but doesn't want to do any of the modding themselves. Because basically you can buy it, you can take it out of the box and go for it. But if for some reason you don't like the switches or you don't like the keycaps, switch them out and you're still going to have a good board. Now this one I did, I mean this is barely modded. I added the um, the BE foam, and I also tightened up the stabilizer. So eh, it's very lightly modded, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a um, a sound test now with these keycaps. And after after that sound test, I'll do a supercut between the stock and now how it sounds. Um, but yeah, basically, I, I maybe I was a little harsh in my first video. I was like, it's a little pricey because this sells for $129. Now, everybody's time is valuable. So I know I've definitely worked on jobs that, I mean, paid in three figures per hour, uh, you know, contract situations. So I, I know my, I mean, we all have a finite amount of time. So if your time is that valuable, because I mean, to do the mods to compare to something like this is going to take you a while. You are going to be working at least a couple of hours at it, if not more, especially if it's your first time. And I mean, if you're making three figures per hour, you see where I'm getting at? I mean, you make, say you make $100 an hour and it takes you two hours to mod a $60 keyboard. So, in the end, you spent $260 plus, you know, any, you know, like the silicone, um, the medical tape, I mean, all the different things for modding. You know, you're going to probably be closer to 275 300 you know, and if you spend any more time, that's just going to continue to go up. So, this keyboard, if you want a keyboard that sounds like you modded it, like, doesn't need any mods, but you don't have the time to do it, you may want to at some point switch out the switches and or the keycaps, or you may want to do it right away, then I can't recommend this board at all. Uh, I mean, because then, I mean, your time is valuable. Um, with the dust cover situation, I mean, it is what it is, but it does work. But I mean, that's not a bad, you know, little addition, you know, especially if you're on the go because you can throw it in your backpack. You're not gonna have to worry about the keycaps coming off, although these magnets are not that strong. And like I had said before with the um, 2.4, see, I mean, so if you do carry it around, uh, honestly, I would uh, I either add a little uh, bit of sticky in there um, or either one of those pieces of double side tape that they're not really tape, they're kind of just like suction. So, um, because it'd be better to, you know, just have a little bit more of an issue. I mean, it's got a little groove right there, so you can use a fingerprint. But, you know, to, to work it a little bit, to have to come out rather than it just falling out, you know. Now, obviously, I'm hitting it hard, but uh, if it's in your backpack, um, it's in, in your case. Now, it does have, if you push down, it kind of locks a little bit more, but not really. So, like I said, if, if I was going to get it, I would do that. So, anyway, um... I'll go ahead and leave you guys with the sound. Let me see if I can get this first press on here. But I'll leave you guys, like I said, with a stock sound test. I mean, with this sound test, and then a supercut between the stock sound test and this sound test. And um, if you guys have any feedback on audio, I'm not sure about this mic and video. I'm not sure about this camera. Um, I'd appreciate it. 
uh, and you, you don't have to, but if, if for some reason you do, I really do appreciate it. So, um, this was interesting. This is definitely, I, there was a lot of firsts I saw in this board, like the magnet in the silicone, the double-sided tape for the battery. Um, like I said, it, it's well built, but some design malfiance. I don't know. I mean, they just, just made some choices I personally would not have made. But that said, if you're not going to open it up, that's perfect. You know, it, it's it's good to go. Switch switch out the switches and keycaps and, you know, have yourself a board that's yours. Anyway, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it for now. I'll go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test coming back up. Keep calm. Keyboard on.